Praise the Lord, everyone. It's time for Tuesday morning prayer and devotion. We have so many requests today that we need to pray about, and I'm thankful for the opportunity to join together with you, my friends, to pray for these needs. Sister Linda Hurd, wife of one of our Missouri District pastors, went to her reward Sunday morning. We're asking that you would pray for peace and comfort for Brother Hurd, the family, and it is tomorrow, so we need to pray for Brother McKinney's family and the church family there at River Bend Pentecostals. Logan Damesworth, who is the son of Pastor Jeremy Damesworth and who serves in the military uh, stationed on the U.S.-Mexico border in El Paso, was attacked and severely beaten, uh, I believe maybe Sunday evening and sustained major head trauma with bleeding on the brain in several places, two skull fractures, fractured nose and broken teeth, and he was listed in critical condition until last night when the bleeding on the brain began to improve and they were able to then transfer him to a military hospital. So the prayers that have been going up um, since people found out about this uh, are working but he and his family need our prayers as well as a few of his fellow soldiers who were also injured in that attack. Pastor Mark Tipton's mother, Ruth Tipton, is in the hospital. Uh, they initially thought that she had shingles, but after taking her to the ER, she was found to have cellulitis. Kathy Bloss was just found to have liver cancer and needs much prayer uh, today. Others who are battling cancer include Versi Gibbs, Brother Anthony Trimble, Lisa Workman, Evelyn Marshall, David Harris, Brother Steve Williford, Christy Smith, Ari Bowers, Lorelei, Jenna, and Tucker, children who are battling cancer, Brother Kirk, who started chemo last week, Kim Stinson, Claire, John Fitzgerald, Josh Solberg, Dwayne Lewis, Terry Adams' friend, Marsha Moore's family member, Wanda Barnes, Michael Boland, Robert Wicks, Del Bishop, Phyllis Robinette, Edie Percival, and Diane Escher. Uh, Judy Williams' mother is having surgery on April 19th to remove a basal cell carcinoma from the top of her nose that will require some skin grafting. So let's keep her in our prayers for that upcoming procedure. Bonnie Chilcutt is expecting biopsy results, I believe, tomorrow to find out whether or not she has kidney cancer. So let's keep praying for Bonnie for good results. We have several with back problems, Brent Moore, James Graham, Tammy Lawson, Michael Parrott, and Terry Adams. And we have several with uh, broken bones and problems with their bones and joints. Uh, Renee has hip and knee problems. Shirley Garner uh, has suffered a broken hip and fractured back that she's recovering from. Pam Pulliam's daughter, Jenny, has osteoporosis in the spine and hips. Karen Pratt's mother uh, has been recovering from a broken chin and jawbones. Linda Brown has a broken shoulder. Brent Moore's mother is recovering from a broken hip. Dorinda Shepard broke her shoulder and is also recovering from knee surgery. Gary Shepard is needing to lose weight in order to qualify for knee surgery. Let's keep praying for that need. We have a couple or a few who are battling with COVID that we know of, Ben Moore in the Nashville area, and Reverend Paul and Darla Brochu in the nation of France. Brother Erickson, Andy Burnett, Donald Luttrell, James Weininger, Pastor Freddie Wyatt, Don Bowie, Gary and Donna, Catherine and Sister Dorothy Cook have all had a long uh, recovery time associated with, re with COVID, so let's keep praying for them and pray for of course, those in the nursing homes today and long-term care facilities, those working in our school systems as well as the students. And we need to pray for Elder Brother Sister Perkins for their healing strength and encouragement today. Uh, Brother Marty DeLott and Brother Riley March suffer with MS and need our prayers. Uh, those with kidney problems include Shirley and Charlotte Kincaid. Sister Mara Sullivan has an autoimmune disease. Tasha Ray, Whitney Adams have both had pregnancy issues recently. Sally Waller's daughter is due to deliver here just uh, in the first part of April. 
Austin and Alyssa's unborn baby was found to have a heart defect that they were told would require surgery as soon as he is born. And I have not heard an update on a due date or anything on that, but let's keep praying for that need. And let's pray for Matt and Michaela Perkins who are trying to start a family. Bobby Larmy needs healing of a blocked artery. Karen Pratt's father needs healing of an aneurysm. Mary McPike needs healing of shingles. J.R. Johnson is diabetic and needs healing of a wound on his leg uh, that's healing slowly due to the diabetes. Uh, Tim Workman, Emily Stanley, Cheryl Lachance, Virgil Pulliam, myself, and so many others are dealing with diabetes. Uh, I do have an appointment coming up this next Monday, and I appreciate your prayers uh, for that checkup. We need to pray for Beth Wheatley today for continued healing of her burn wounds. Uh, we have several with heart issues, Missionary Robin Shute's father, Everett Hart, Keegan, Gerald Hudson, um, my grandfather, Ellis Marshall, Willow, Ronald Clinton, and Brent Smith. Uh, baby Elsie has had recent heart surgery, so we need to pay, pray for her for continued recovery and also other children needing prayer, Abram Page, who has GNAO1 disorder, Sophia with problems with her eyesight, Ellie May, who was in a bad sledding accident, Magnolia, and Abel Ray, who is suffering from PKU syndrome. Kendra Ortiz and Robbie Northrup have COPD. Rue is needing a double lung retransplant. Leslie Pride and Lana Taylor suffer with dementia. Jen Marlin needs healing of dystonia. My father, as well as my mother-in-law, and Tim Workman and Russ all needing healing of Parkinson's disease. Marsha Moore and Ezariah Gorley have had problems recently with hypertension and Marsha also needs healing of uh, headaches and chronic stomach issues. Terry Adams and Michael Parrott also have stomach issues. Cheryl LaChance has several issues related to diabetes and some organ infection, other things going on in her body. She has chronic liver problems and stomach issues. So let's pray for Cheryl's continued healing. We need to pray for Allison and Nick for their continued recovery from stroke. Uh, Ethan, Annette, Roxanne, Bonnie, and Regina all need healing of physical problems. James Graham's grandfather is on hospice and needs our continued prayers. We have many spiritual needs this morning. Marsha Moore's children and granddaughter, Jennifer and Brenda's family, Barbara Owens, Haley, Evie, Rose, Carl, and Connor, Sylvia's family, Adam and Heather, Michelle Clark and family, Judy and Mike's daughter, Jennifer, Judy's brother, Louis, Lori Arbo's mother, Debbie's daughter, Jamie and her family, Debbie's niece, Peggy Fiedler and her family, Caroline Sexton's family, Josiah, our Mingo Job Corps students, Pam Pulliam's children, uh, Mark and Caitlin, this is Brother Mark Perkins' son and daughter-in-law needing our prayers today for spiritual needs. Beulah's family, Carmen's daughter Grace, Art Chandler, and Terry Adams' children. We need to pray for all those who are suffering mentally today and with emotional issues. And as the pandemic recedes, in the wake of that, the after effects of that, is uh, many lives have been ruined um, as far as uh, income, um, people losing their jobs, uh, things that will take a long time to recover from. And this has had an, a great impact. The isolation and the economic impact on people's lives has really caused people to suffer emotionally and mentally. So let's keep praying for those needs. We need to pray for Patrick today, for Nathan, who's battling depression, for Dalton, who is recovering, needing to recover from uh, injuries uh, due to addiction and recover from addiction itself. And we have many family issues to pray about today. Brother and Sister Woody's family needs healing, comfort, and restoration. Marsha Moore has a family situation. Cheryl Lachance and her family need prayer. Debbie Biddick's daughters, Jessica and Jamie, need prayer for their relationships. We need to continue to pray for Angela Schweitzer's family, for Annette and Dave, who are dealing with some marital issues. Grace's best friend's parents are going through divorce right now. That family needs much prayer. And we need to continue praying for 
Regina Marlin, the Vaughn family, Peggy Sue Field, uh, Fiedler, and uh, Judy Williams, who all have unspoken requests today. So let's continue to remember them. I welcome you this morning. Good to see you, Penny and Kristen, Sister Pam, Marcia, Judy. Good to see you, Beulah. We're thankful for each of you joining us here this morning live as we pray for the needs of our uh, family and friends and loved ones. And uh, we know that those prayers definitely do not fall upon deaf ears because we serve a God who's not like the idol gods that the world serves, who have hands that can't touch you. They have eyes that can't see your need. They have ears that cannot hear your cry. But we serve a God whose arm is not shortened and uh, his ear is not heavy today. And he is wanting to move in our needs. I feel his presence here very strongly right now that he wants to move in our needs today and we're going to take these needs to the lord together in unity and believe god for uh, the answers that we need to prayer tomorrow morning will represent the one year anniversary of this program if you want to call it that this prayer time that we uh, that we take to heart every morning at 7 30 every weekday morning we'll have been doing this for one year uh, as of tomorrow and so if you just total that up five days a week over the course of the year that'll be the number of times that we have done this and uh, there's not been a day that's been missed there's been a few times that we have had some complications and had to uh, re-air the broadcast or air it at a later time or pre-record it but we've been here daily and I thank those of you who have been here daily with me as well been talking about the need for God's wisdom and Jesus uh, told us a story a parable if you will uh, to get this point across to us for our need of the wisdom of God we find it in Matthew 7 he said therefore whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Oh, we've experienced that over this past year. You've experienced that throughout the course of your life. I'm sure pandemic was not the first time that the winds blew, the floods came, and beat upon your house in a spiritual sense. And he said, Everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. We all know people who have suffered the same kind of storms of life that perhaps we have suffered and they did not survive that. Other people who have survived unbelievable odds and circumstances what is the difference the difference is whether or not they had their foundation built upon jesus christ and upon his teachings and not just understanding the word of god but obeying the word of god and jesus said if you do that uh, you're going to be classified with the wise if you don't do that you're going to be grouped in with the foolish who are not going to be successful and so in this story in matthew chapter 7 jesus teaches us about the foundation to build our lives on and um, he begins to show us that when you build upon that foundation of things come those things are disturbed the sands begin to shift and every single one of us has built our lives on a foundation the question is what type and I'm just going to stop right there because I know time is short today and we're going to come back and contemplate this further tomorrow we have to make sure though that our um, foundation is built upon the Word of God and upon the promises of the Word and that we are obeying his commandments if we do that there have been times that there were no easy answers but I knew I did the will of God and even though there was fallout associated with that I'm going to tell you in the long term, wisdom is to do the Word of God, to live it. And sometimes in the, in the short term, there will be terrible consequences, it seems, 
that are associated with doing the will of God. But if you will do his will, if you will stay on that firm foundation and build upon that, then sometimes there will be parts of the house that will have to be repaired. But the foundation itself will be sure. And when things, uh, when the roof is blown off, when things do happen, you can always rebuild if you're on that solid foundation. Let's pray together, trusting in this foundation of the Word of God, this foundation He's given us for divine healing, this foundation He's given us for the supplying of our needs and for our peace of mind today. It's all in His Word and in His instruction to us to pray the way we're going to pray right now. Let's pray together. Lord, we come to you in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. We're so thankful that we know your name and that we know your power. And we come today, Lord, we want to take a moment and just exalt you and enter your gates with thanksgiving. We come into your courts with praise today. Hallelujah. You are worthy, Lord, to be lifted up. You are worthy to be magnified above everything in our lives. There is no disaster. There is no trial. There is no test that is worthy of our recognition of its significance, God, because it all pales in comparison to the eternal power, the eternal blessing that's associated with knowing you. We thank you, God, that our eternity is secure in you. We thank you, God, that our promises in this life, uh, Lord, that we're going to survive whatever comes against us through your word, through your promises. We give you praise for those things. We praise you, Lord, because we have confidence in your ability. We know that your arm is not shortened today. We know, God, that you're hearing our petitions. We know, God, that your heart is moved by our prayers today, and you have compassion upon us, and we thank you for that. And so we bring these needs to you, Lord. And sometimes we don't know exactly how to pray. But God, as we pray, we, we ask God that just that your will would be done, that you would answer these needs according to your desire and according to your unlimited perspective and your unmatched knowledge and wisdom. The apostles today, God, that you would comfort their hearts and their loss. Comfort Brother Hurd. Comfort the McKinney family today, God as they're preparing for his home-going service. We pray today, Lord, for the Damesworth family. We pray for Logan today, God, for complete healing of his body. Lord, for his uh, fellow soldiers who were injured in this attack uh, in El Paso. We believe, God, for their complete healing and restoration. We pray, God, for Sister Ruth Tipton today, that you would touch her body, that they would be able to bring that infection, that sickness under control quickly. We pray for Kathy Bloss today for healing of liver cancer. You see the devastation that this news has brought to this family and to their friends and loved ones. God, we pray you would help them today to believe and to trust in you. We pray, God, for each one of these that we've called their names out today. Lord, on this list that are battling cancer, you see each one of them. And you know, God, where they're at in their treatment and in their situation. Lord, some of them are are all the way to stage four right now, and their their condition appears to many to be hopeless. But Lord, we've had people removed from this list who have been declared cancer-free even after being in stage four. We give you thanks for that. I thank you, Lord, for touching my Uncle Delbert, who was on this list and today has been cleared of cancer. We thank you for that, God. We give you praise for all that you're doing. We pray today for Judy's mom, who's having surgery April 19th to remove this basal cell cancer from her nose. We pray, God, that, that all of that would go well, that they would get every bit of that cancer and be able to remove it, that the skin grafting would go well. We pray for Bonnie, Lord, that her biopsy results would come back favorably. We pray for those with back problems today, those with bone and joint issues. Lord, that you would minister healing, that those broken bones would begin to mend, that they would mend correctly and fully, God. In Jesus' name, those that are dealing with osteoporosis today and recovering from surgeries on their bones and joints, we believe, God, for their complete restoration. We pray for Gary today, Lord, that he'll be able to lose the weight necessary to have a knee surgery, Lord. We pray for those who are battling COVID today. Touch Ben, touch Paul and Darla today. In Jesus' name, those who are slowly recovering from the effects of COVID 
We thank you, God, that they're no longer battling the active infection in their bodies. We pray, God, for restoration of their of their respiratory system, respiration, Lord, of their uh, restoration of their blood sugar to its normal levels. In Jesus' name, restoration of their energy today, God. In Jesus' name, we pray, God, for those in nursing homes, those who are shut in today, for the Perkins today, God. We pray your comfort and strength and healing for them. We pray for those working in the school systems today and for the, the students there, God, that your hand would be upon them. We pray, God, for Brother Marty DeLott and Brother Riley March as they battle multiple sclerosis. We know you're their healer today. Those who are battling kidney problems, uh, those who are battling autoimmune disease right now, those, God, who are dealing with pregnancy issues, uh, we believe, God, for uh, the complications to be overcome, for these pregnancies to be stable, for these children to be protected in the womb, in Jesus' name, for the deliveries to be safe. And we pray that for Tasha and Whitney, for Sally's daughter, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we pray, God, for Austin and Alyssa, for this situation with their baby that's needing heart surgery. In Jesus' name, we pray, God, for Matt and Michaela, that they would be able to start their family. We pray for Bobby today, God, for healing of this blocked artery, for Karen's father, for healing of aneurysm, for Mary McPeak to be healed of shingles. Uh, Lord, for those that are dealing with diabetes and the complications of that. You see Tim and Emily and Cheryl and Virgil today. Lord, you see J.R. Johnson today. Touch his body. We pray, God, for Sister Beth today for continued healing of her hands. In Jesus' name, you see that hand, Lord, that is, uh, is, is burnt today and is slowly healing. We believe for acceleration of that healing today. In Jesus' name, we believe for healing of those who are struggling with the heart issues, uh, for Brent and for Ronald Clinton, for Willow, for my grandfather, for Michelle's grandfather, for Keegan and Everett, and for Missionary Robin Shute's father who's needing a heart transplant, Lord. Move in that situation. Touch these children today, God, uh, who need healing. Touch baby Elsie, Lord. Strengthen her little heart today, God. Bring healing, Lord, to her coronary system right now. We pray for Abram, Lord, for healing of GNA01 disorder, for Sophia, that she would be healed, Lord, that her eyes uh, would be strengthened today. We pray for Abel, God, to be healed of PKU syndrome. We believe for healing for Ellie Mae and for Magnolia in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for healing of the lungs right now. We declare that healing for Robbie and Kendra. We declare healing for Rue today. In Jesus' name, we declare healing for Jen Marlin of dystonia, for Leslie Pride and Lana Taylor who are suffering with dementia. We pray strength for their caregivers today. Hallelujah. Encouragement for them, God. Hold them up today, we pray. Hallelujah. These who are suffering from Parkinson's disease, Lord, you are Lord over every disease and you are Lord over Parkinson's. We rebuke that sickness and those symptoms right now in Jesus' name. We believe for healing of hypertension for Pastor Gorley, for Sister Marcia today, healing of headaches and chronic stomach issues, healing, Lord, for Terry and Michael and Cheryl today. We believe for healing for Nick and for Allison as they continue to recover from stroke. We pray, God, for Regina and Bonnie and Roxanne, for Annette and for Ethan, Lord, that their health issues will be resolved. We pray for James Graham's grandfather, who's on hospice right now, Lord. You're able, God, to reach down. Oh, minister your healing. Minister your comfort. Minister your peace today. In Jesus' name, Lord, we bring our family and our loved ones, uh, our friends to you, Lord, who need uh, their spiritual needs met today, those who do not know you in our families, those uh, who have walked away from truth, who have walked away from you, Lord, and are trying to live their life out there in the world, Lord, those who know better than that today. I pray, God, you would awake them out of their sleep, that you would heal their backslidings, that you would draw them back to yourself today. 
Hallelujah. Help us to evangelize our world. Lord, help us, God, as the church, to be ready to treat those spiritual conditions. Hallelujah, Lord, that we would be that hospital that you desire us to be. Lord, that we wouldn't be so concerned about ourselves, but about the patient who needs treatment today. Hallelujah. Move in their needs, we pray, God. You see every name that we've called out today in these prayer requests. And we believe, God, for their restoration, for their salvation, for their deliverance. We pray for those who are struggling mentally right now and emotionally, Lord, for their healing. We pray for Patrick and Nathan and Dalton. We believe, God, for you to move in these family situations, for the Woody family, for Marcia's family situation, for Cheryl and her family, for Debbie's daughters, Jessica and Jamie and their relationships. We pray for Angela's family today, God. We know you're moving in that situation. We thank you, God, Lord, for what you're doing in their lives today. We pray for Annette and Dave, Lord, that you would move in their marriage. We pray for Grace's best friends, parents, Lord, in this divorce situation that this family is being ripped apart. We pray, God, for your healing, for your touch in that family today. We pray for the unspoken requests, Lord, for Peggy Sue and for Regina and for the Vaughn family and for Judy's son today. God, move in these needs. You know the situation, God, and we know that you're on the throne today and you're working in these needs. Hallelujah. You're working all things together for our good, and we give you praise for what you're doing in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's just lift up his name right now for a moment as we close out this prayer time. We give you the praise, Lord. We give you the glory. We give you the thanks right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for answering today, God. And however that you choose to answer today, Lord, we're thankful that you've intervened in our needs and we know that you know best for us. Hallelujah. We give you the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you today for being a part of prayer time. I look forward to joining together with you again tomorrow. Of course, as I mentioned, the one-year anniversary date of morning prayer and devotion. And I hope that you'll join me, invite someone, share this video. Uh, you can still create a watch party up until, I believe, the middle of April. And then they're taking that away. So take advantage of that feature while it's still available. And, of course, you can always share these to your own timeline or to someone else that you feel needs to be a part of this prayer group or needs to know that we're praying for them. I look forward to being with you again tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m.